Good morning everybody and welcome back to another video and today I've got something a little bit different for you. I was hoping to do the Leo 2A4 first impressions video for today and once again I couldn't get into a match. I got very excited when I looked at the events tab for today and realised that it was in simulator mode and then that smile quickly faded when I realised I was sat in a queue for 20 minutes. I actually went and had a shower before I even went on the queue and I still hadn't gotten into a match. Um, so yeah. Today however we're going to be talking about somebody not something there are a lot of people out there that do videos on tank cases with footage of war thunder in the background this is something i've been planning on doing for a long time and given the fact that i'm driving a tiger one i suppose it shouldn't be too complicated to figure out which nation i'm going to be using as my first example i don't know what playlist this video is going to go into yet but i suppose we will see when we get there Unlike your Michael Vittmans and your Otto Karius's though, I highly doubt you've heard of this man. This is Kurt Nispel. Now, I have a link of some information about Kurt I will be reading, but allow me to calm your nerves by saying this. I assume some of you put your backs up against the wall as soon as I said that, or inferred that I was going to be talking about a German Tiger Ace, but here's the thing. Kurt wasn't German. And he sure as shit was not a Nazi. He was not a bad person by any stretch of the imagination. He was a soldier. People often say the same thing about Erwin Rommel. And they're not wrong. Kurt is a man who beat the living shit out of an SS officer for mistreating prisoners. Yeah. That's why we're doing a video on Kurt. Now, let's begin. Kurt was born on September the 20th, 1921, in a small town called Salisfled in Czechoslovakia. He spent most of his childhood in Muklovoice, where his fam father worked in an automotive factory. Nispel disliked factory work, and in April 1940, he decided to join the Wehrmacht as a volunteer. He started basic training at the Panzer Replacement Training Battalion at Sagan. There he was subjected to his general military training. PT, how to march, salute, use weapons such as the P-38 pistol, Karnan AK, Mauser rifle, and hand grenades, obviously. After basic training, Nispel went on to Panzer training to operate the Panzer 1, 2, and the Panzer 4. On October the 1st, Kurt was transferred to a quote-unquote field unit of the 3rd Company of the 29th Panzer Regiment, 12th Panzer Battalion, where he finished his training as a loader slash gunner on the Panzer 4. During training at Plutos, he first demonstrated his abilities as a gunner. He had a gift of total three-dimensional vision, as well as extraordinary reflexes. But to Nispel's dismay, he remained a loader. Nispel first saw action in August the 41st in a Panzer IV tank during Operation Barbarossa. For those of you who don't know, this is the German invasion of the Soviet Union. He quickly rose to the position of a gunner under the command of Lieutenant Hellman. By January 1942, Nispel had returned to P Putlos to undergo his training in the new Tiger tank, and at the time, he, would, he, is, he is already credited with 12 tank victories. His next home was the 1st Company of the 503rd Heavy Panzer Battalion, where he took part in the Battle of Kursk as flank cover to the 7th Panzer Battalion. From there, he went on to commanding a Tiger II within the same unit. Recommended four times to receive the Knight's Cross, an award he never received. This does not concern him as he was not driven by fame or decoration. Nispel's record lists 168 confirmed kills, but when unconfirmed victories are included, the total adds up to 195. Even at 168 confirmed, this makes Nispel the most successful tank ace of World War II. He scored an incredible kill of a Soviet T-34 tank at a range of 3,000 meters, 3 kilometers. Nispel's, the, Nispel was awarded the Iron Cross First Class and then the Tank Assault Badge in gold after more than 100 tank kills. After destroying 126 tanks, Nispel was awarded the German Gold Cross while becoming the only German NCO to receive this honour to be mentioned in the Wehrmacht communique in World War II. It is also said that he credited many kills to others that he could have, ha that he could have called his own. Nispel most often shed away from this type of argument and was known for his affable nature. Nispel as a tank commander was in his own element. At times he even faced superior enemies alone to give the units he was supporting the best chance to advance or the safest passage of retreat. Alfred Rubel, one of Nispel's first commanders, stated that when he was on the field of battle he never abandoned anyone, even, the worst, even in the worst situations and conditions. 
Hardened by conflict in many areas, which included Kursk, Vinatasa, Yampol, Kamets, Polodosk, the Kunskursky Pocket, Sian, uh, uh, in the retreat from Normandy, then to the east eastern front in the battles near Metzator, towards Gannos, Chaksermet, Kelliged, Grand Bridgehead, Bab Castle, La, Nitra, Gaila, and his final battle in Wastits, where he was fatally wounded on April 28, 1945, ten days before the war ended. His lack of authority towards the higher ranks of the German command contributed towards his slow advancement through the ranks. On one occasion, Nispel assaulted an officer who, saw wh who, who he saw was mistreating POWs. Nispel had a tattoo, a goatee, and longer than regulation hair, but spite, all, but spite of all that, he was very well liked by his fellow soldiers and his skills were never matched. At the age of 23, Nispel had more tank kills than Michael Wittmann, Ernst Bachmann, Johann Bolter, or Otto Karius. The end of this sad story of the death of a legend as a positive as Nispel's remains were found by historians in Vorbrech in an unmarked grave behind a church. Quote, he was identified by the military tattoo on his neck. A spokesperson said that the Moravian Museum on April 10, 2013, Czech authorities confirmed that Nispel's remains were found among 15 other soldiers behind a church wall in Rubrau. It is likely that he will be reburied at the military cemetery in Brno. Rest in peace, Kurt Nispel. Well, there you have it, guys. That was a small little dip into Kurt Nispel's life and his career during the Wehrmacht in World War II. I hope you liked the video. Thank you very much for watching. And let me know who you'd like me to cover next. And I'll see you guys in the next Wolf in the Video. Cheers.